And in this video, we're going to be taking a look on pages Excel 32 and 33, in which we're going to be copying and moving cell entries. Now, there are three ways that you can copy or move cells and ranges, or the contents within them, from one location to another. And of course, you can use the cut, copy, and paste buttons on the home tab on the ribbon, or you can use the fill handles in the lower right hand corner of the active cell or the range, or you can use the drag and drop feature. Now when you copy cells, the original data remains in the original location. And when you cut or move cells, the original data is deleted from its original location and it's moved to the new location. Now you can also cut, copy, and paste cells or ranges from one worksheet to another. So for an example, you know, we had this one for year 2016. You know, maybe if we copy this, we could copy the same information and do it for 2017 and 2018 uh, on there. So that would give us, you know, some options that we could use as well. So if we take a look on page Excel 32, and if we look on step one, it tells us that first of all, we want to select the range B3 to E3. And of course, that is the labels for quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. Once we have that, we're going to click on the copy button in the clipboard group on the home tab. And of course, now the selected range is copied to the clipboard. Uh, of course, once again, that's a temporary window storage area that holds the selections you copy or cut. Now, a moving border surrounds the selected range until you either press the escape key or you copy an additional item to the clipboard. So this is kind of a way of saying, you know, if you got distracted, hey, this is what you copied last. Now once, uh, once we complete this, of course remember, uh, to cut or copy selected cell contents, um, you, act that you need to activate the cell, then select the characters within the cell you want to cut or copy. So if you want to go for the contents inside of it, uh, that's one thing you need to do is you need to activate the cell and then copy it. Uh, with inside the cell. So in this case we're just copying the cells themselves and all the contents inside of it, not parts of it. In step two it tells us that we want to click on the dialog box launcher in the clipboard group. So that is this little button right here. We click on that and of course we notice that here's the clipboard task pane uh, that appears. Now when you cut or copy an item it is cut or copied to both the clipboard provided by Windows and to the office clipboard. Now, unlike Windows clipboard, which holds just one item at a time, the office clipboard contains up to 24 of the most recently cut or copied items from any office program. Now, your clipboard task pane may contain more items than the one that's shown in this, uh, on the screen right now. But if not, you know, if, it, if this is all that you see, that's perfectly fine. If there's more items that's on here, just ignore those items because all we're going to do is focus on this quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. Next on step three, it tells us that we want to click on cell B19. Once we have that, then it tells us that we want to click on the paste button in the clipboard group. Now it's the top half of the paste button. It's not the one with the arrow on it. It's the top one. And of course, once we do that, a copy of the contents of range B3 to E3 is pasted into the range B19 to E19. Now, when pasting an item from the office clipboard or clipboard into a worksheet, you only need to specify the upper left cell of the range where you want to paste the selection. Now, notice that the information you copied remains in the original range B3 to E3. Now, if you had cut instead of copy, the information would be deleted from its original location once it was pasted. Now, of course, once the office clipboard, and this is just kind of a quick tip, once the office clipboard contains 24 items, the oldest existing item is automatically deleted each time you add a brand new item. Uh, so once you add in that 25th item, the first item that uh, you copied or cut is automatically deleted from that clipboard. So um, sometimes it's helpful to keep that clipboard up just to see how many items you have going. Step four then tells us that we're going to press our delete key on our keyboard. And of course the cells, uh, the selected cells that we had are now empty. You have decided to paste the cells in a different row. Now you can repeatedly paste an item from the office clipboard as many times as you like 
as long as the item remains in the office clipboard. So since, these, since this item's still here, we can keep on using it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down one row and step five tells us we're going to click on cell B20. And then of course we're going to click on the quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four in the clipboard group. And of course now that will paste that uh, here, uh, these labels, from the B3 to E3, now into B20 to E20. Now once we have that, we're done with our clipboard for now, so we can just click on this close button to close the clipboard task pane. Now of course you can also close the office clipboard pane by clicking the dialog box uh, launcher in the clipboard group. So you know if you have this up, you can just always click that again and it makes it go away. On step six, it tells us that we want to select cell A14. And of course this is for the 20% rise. And in this case, now we want to press and hold the control key on your keyboard and then you're going to point to any edge of the cell until your pointer looks like this and until it looks like a regular pointer but with a plus sign next to it. Once you have this, you're going to click and drag this down to cell A21. Then of course you're going to release your mouse button and then release control. And what you've just done is, is that when you press the control key, that's activating the copy pointer. Uh, and of course that copy pointer continues to appear as long as you drag and as long as you hold in that control key. Now when you release the mouse button, the contents of whatever you selected on the edge of that is going to be copied to whatever cell that you moved it to. So in this case, we selected this uh, cell here, the A14. We pressed our control key, clicked on the edge, and drug it down. So we've moved that. However, one thing to notice as well, that was not put in on the clipboard. So uh, whenever you do that, that's called the drag and drop method. Uh, that did not end up in on the clipboard. Now if we take a look at step 7, in step 7 it tells us that we're going to click just to the right of the 2 here in the 20% rise and we're going to do that up in the formula bar. Then we're going to press our backspace key to delete the 2 and we're going to type in the number 3. Once we have that we can press our enter key on our keyboard and it's going to accept it. So now we can figure this up and say hey well these were the 20% rise but what happens if there's a 30% rise? Remember that term, what if analysis? See, we can quickly go through and we can complete that and we can say, okay, well, what happens if there's a 30% rise? What's going to be the new expenses now? So we can quickly answer those questions very easily. And to do this, we can go through and say, okay, and if we take a look at step eight, we can answer that question. And it tells us that we want to click on cell B21. And first of all, we're going to type in our equal sign because that's our formula prefix. Then we want to click on cell B12 because that's our total expenses. And in this time, we're going to type in multiplied by 1.3. Now, anytime you multiply a number by one point, and then uh, for example, three, that point three is a 30% increase. So that's what we're finding is a 30% rise. So if I take B12 times B12, that would still give me this number right here. But when I add on that 3 tenths, or that's the same thing as adding on 30%, that's another way of calculating up a 30% rise. So once I have that, I'm going to click on my Enter button, and that would be my result for a 30% increase uh, on there. And this new formula calculates up a 30% increase of the expenses for quarter one. And, of course, it uses a different method than what we used previously. Now, anything you multiply by 1.3 is an amount that is 130% of the original amount, or a 30% increase. So just keep that in mind uh, on there, because I know uh, typically most students in the past ha does have problems with that. When it says, well, how can I find a 40% increase? Okay, well, if 1.3 is a 30% increase, a 1.4 would be a 40% increase. So if I would take the cell times 1.4, that would give me a 40% increase. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, of course, now you can insert and delete selected cells as well. Now, as you add formulas to your workbook, 
you may need to insert or delete cells. And when you do this, Excel will automatically adjust cell references to reflect their new locations. To insert cells, you click on the Insert List arrow on the Cells group on the Home tab. Then click the Insert Cells. The Insert dialog box opens, and then it asks if you want to insert a cell and move the current active cell down or to the right of the new one. Now, of course, to delete one or more selected cells, you can click the Delete List arrow in the Cells group and click the Delete Cells. And in the Delete dialog box, you can indicate which way you want to move the adjacent cells. When you use this option, be careful not to disrupt row or column alignments that may be necessary to maintain the accuracy of cell references in the sheet uh, or your worksheet. And click the Insert button or Delete buttons in the cell group to insert or delete a single cell. So sometimes you may need to do that. And of course, you can do all that uh, on here uh, just by using the insert and delete cells uh, buttons that's on here. And of course, you know, um, typically I find most of the time I use the insert rows or columns most frequently because maybe we get a different country in here and notice that this is alphabetized and I can go through here and I can select where it fits in at and I can insert in the row and that will automatically update all my cell references for me. So another very valuable tool of Excel. So go ahead and make sure that you do save your work because in the next video, uh, we're going to just have a little discussion about absolute and uh, relative cell references. And then we're going to go through uh, after that and talk and actually talk about and copy uh, those formulas as well. So just go ahead and make sure you save your work and you're ready to move on to the next video.